Okay, I'm going to show you how I put the uh, footrest on a high chair. A lot of ways to do it. This is the way I do it. Uh, <clears throat> so first off, I have to get a, a measurement. I'm going to put the footrest right here. And so I've kind of designed the high chair to think that maybe that's about where the kid's foot would be. But kids are different sizes, so who knows. But <clears throat> anyway, first I've got to get a measurement on the length of, of the footrest. And uh, the way I find the center is this tricky trick aluminum trick here. I can just put it up against it and rub on it, and the oxidation will mark it. Uh, or if you have something that's not aluminum, you could just put pencil lead on it, graphite, and just rub it on it, and you'll get the high points marked. <coughs> then, measure it. And I've got 11 and 3 eighths there. And these are the little knobs. Of course, I haven't cut them in half yet. These are the little knobs. And <coughs> they're an inch and a sixteenth. And I want the tenon to go five-eighths deep. So that's the center point, which would mean I'm only at a half-inch point in there. And, uh, well, a little more than half-inch since it's an inch and sixteenth. I'm a thirty-second deeper than that. So I need to go three thirty-seconds more on this side and three thirty-seconds more on this side. You know, and you'll figure it out yourself. But... Uh, that's adding three sixteenths to the total length. <clears throat> so at eleven and three eighths, then that would be eleven. Did I say eleven and three eighths? Let's make sure. There. Yeah, eleven and three eighths. Yeah, that'd be six sixteenths plus three sixteenths. Eleven and nine sixteenths would be the total length of of the footrest. Okay, so now I'm ready to go turn them, and I'm not going to show you how to turn them. I'm not going to go into that. i got enough turning videos up. Uh, <clears throat> but I turn the knobs right like that. I cut it to uh, six inches, and that's an inch, that's an inch, and that's an inch. And I leave the lathe centers on it to where I can remount it, <clears throat> and I can true these tenons. So as always with all my tenons, I turn them a little bit oversized. And then I put it in my light bulb dry kiln and dry it and shrink it. And then I size it to fit whatever drill bit I'm using. And that's already been done to these. These, these are ready to go now. Um, the tenons are 5 eighths by an inch on these right here. And then I'll cut it, cut it in half. Um, <coughs> the footrest, the way I do it, I do it a bunch of different ways. About every time I do one, I do it different. But this is the way I show on the plants. And that is to uh, turn it to the limb and turn the tenons, leaving this at an inch and three-eighths in the middle, tapering it down. Now this is all ready now. Now I'm going to slice off the top and the bottom so the footrest is flat. And you can do that whatever way you feel comfortable with. I'm more comfortable with a draw knife, and so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to knock this off with a draw knife right now, show you how to do that. And then we'll come back to uh, showing you how I set up to drill, to drill these. Okay, I'm going to do this on the shaving horse with the draw knife. And first off, you want to flatten the, the right side. So. I always have grain orientation with my uh, with my with my tenons, <clears throat> which would be that with this one you would want the ellipses pointing this way and this way. So this is the radial plane up here, and that isolates the plane that moves the most and isolates the two planes that move the least. And uh, I talk about that in some previous videos too. If you're interested in knowing knowing more about that. So uh, so I'll be cutting this this uh, radial plane which is uh, great because it's the easiest plane to cut in and this is not going to be easy cutting uh, because it's a 
hard maple and it's dry. So not my favorite draw knife work. So try to orient that to where it's pretty close to dead on. I find this a lot more controllable with less anxiety than doing it on the on the bandsaw. So you don't want to hit your tenon. And I can look at that and see how well I got it. And it's not not too bad. Let's flip it around. It looked like it really worked that way. And I can clean it up with the spoke shave. So I got it right up to the tenon there. Now, I usually just jump over here and flatten out this side. But I had this great idea. Sometimes they don't line up just right. I had this great idea. I wonder if I could just set this. Let me get my rule here. I wonder if I could set this for like uh, three quarters. You got five eighths out there, and that'd give me a sixteenth on either side, and get a mark. I wonder if I could do that. Why, well, yeah, look at that. Wow. Oh, cheap pencils. Come on. I wonder if it'll let me get one more mark there. There we go. Okay. Too long. Look that way. Pretty good. Okay. Turn around. Great. Now we're ready to bore some holes. Okay, so I'm set up to drill the holes for the knobs in the in the chair. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, when I, I designed this chair in, I think, 1987, and, you know, I had to come up, how am I going to drill those by myself in here and, and get them both the same? Because you don't have any leeway on this thing. They've got to, they've got to be perfect. They've got to nail, they've got to nail it. Um, so I came up with this little, this little setup, and uh, so I think you can see everything in the in in the lens. So what I've done is the level doesn't have anything to do with the level. You can have just a straight board. It just happens that this level hangs over there and and it's straight. So so I use it for that. And so well, the very first thing I do, let me back up. The very first thing I do is I set up the chair to where the legs are the same distance from the edge of the table, okay? There we go, it's off a little bit. <clears throat> now, the legs are the same distance from the edge of the table. And then, I set this straight edge, which is the level, up. I take a square, framing square, and I square off of the front edge of the table and get the level lined up to where now it is perpendicular to the front edge of that table. That's going to be my guide for what I would call 
the horizontal plane this way. Okay. Now I need a guide for the vertical plane. And I like for the footrest to be not at the same angle as the legs, but flat with the floor. Okay. So what I do is, if you can see the tool cabinet over there, it's got lines from the drawers. So I figure that's level enough. Level enough for me. Okay. So I've got to be able to see that and see the drill bit. So I put a mirror over here, and as I'm standing here with the, with the drill, right like this, I'm going to put my glasses on, I can't see my hole. There we go. Standing here with the drill, I can just look into that mirror, and I can see this bit lined up with those drawers over there. And then I can just look straight down, and get it lined up with the uh, with the level or straight edge. Now, as you can see, I'm using a cordless drill. Not my favorite tool to use. For this, I typically do use a bit brace and an auger bit, although the auger bit I use here is that crazy Cook's Patton bit. If you don't know what that is, go, go look it up. But it looks like an auger bit with mustache on it. Uh, but when I sized the tenons, I got them just a tad bit smaller than what I needed to get them. So I had to adjust. This bit is an old Stanley power bore. They used to make them, don't make them anymore. I've got a bunch of them. And while originally they come at exactly 5 eighths or 625, you can size them. And it's pretty neat the way you size them, but I'm not going to go into that either. But you can size them. So I've got them all the way from like 585 thousandths to 625. And so when I do just happen to go under my tenon size, then I can always back up and go with one of these. So that's my excuse for using this uh, drill, cordless drill. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to drill it. I drill it uh, an inch deep, or just and that's where my flag is there. Actually, the flag is a little bit, about an inch and an eighth, but I've got plenty of room to go into there. So I've got it lined up, looking down for the horizontal on the level. And looking in the mirror, I can see I'm lined up with my drawers there. So, while you're not looking, I'm going to drill this other one, and uh, then we'll fit the knobs. Got another train. Well, I cut my knobs in half. Didn't have to show you that. Um, and these joints, if you've seen some of the other videos, you'll see when I put together the stretcher system leg, it's a, I have to pound them together. I, I lock them tight. You can't have this that tight. You'd never, you'd never get the thing together. And, uh, and this doesn't need to be as tight as these down here. I mean, it's tight enough. And it's super dry. It's going to swell once it gets in there. It ain't ever coming out. But I can push it in. Uh, <clears throat> so if I push this in, what I see is that I've got some raw tenon showing right up here because that's round on the front. And that'd be fine, it's not a big deal, but I don't want it there. So what I do is I take a pencil and I push it right up against the bottom here and mark. And then I take a knife leave it at that, but I think I'll go one more time. <clears throat> and you can get it to where you eliminate all of that 
since we're all pan in there. So I'll do it to this one, and then when I come back, I'll set up to bore the other mortises in the knobs then. Okay, so uh, I've got to drill a hole in that, and as I was saying before, there's very little leeway with these, with these mortises. So when I have to do something this accurate, like if you've seen the way some other videos where I bore holes and drill the chair, I wing a whole lot of it and because I know the tolerances are not that tight and I can get close enough. Here, close enough doesn't work. you got to get dead on. So when I have to get dead on, I use two mirrors. Now you might have a drill press. I don't have a drill press. That big thing to do it with a big drill press. You know, you just set it up and you drill it perfect. Okay, so I don't have one. <clears throat> so. I got two mirrors and squares set up both those, so I got my two planes. Now I gotta secure this thing some way. So what I did was made a little three peg system here. This is just gonna lock in there right like that. Yep, come back here. Like that. And then I'm just gonna wedge it from that side. So I'm going to set it down on the bench and clamp it, and you won't be able to see it real good once I do that. But, uh, but that's what I'm going to be doing, and, uh, and I'll bore it. So <clears throat> let's clamp this down. And you want the, the mirrors as parallel and perpendicular to the plane you're boring in as you possibly, possibly can get. And of course this is oriented to where, once again, I'm born into the radial plane and that way the tenon is oriented proper to the mortise that's in the chair leg. It'd be going right like that. So the plane that moves the least is this way and the plane that will eventually move the most through expansion and shrinkage over the years is in that, in that plane right there. <clears throat> and that's the way I do all my all my joints. Um, let's see if I can get that. Getting that top dead center is kind of tricky too. Okay. So let's see if I move that. Any that work? Okay. So I use the same drill and same bit. see it in the mirror, but I don't trust it, but I should, I can see it just perfect in the mirror, I think that's it. Let's see, I got five eighths from the high point, which is what I was going after, yep. Okay, so I'll drill the other one, and uh, when I come back, uh, we'll dry fit it into the chair. Well, not much left to do. The holes are bored and uh, we're ready to do a dry run. And I'm not going to glue it up. I'm just going to show you the dry run because uh, I didn't heat up any glue. But you get to see all that's necessary anyway. So, let's see. We'll put that together and that one together there. And then Slide it right up there. 
and there you go. And you just got to make sure that that's flat the way that you want it. You could take a something like this and look and make sure. Looks like it's dropping just a tad bit, so I tweak it. There we go. That's uh, well, that's straight with the seat. Seat tilts a little bit. Well, depends on how you want it. You want it with the seat. You want it with the with the uh, bench or the floor, however you want. It. <clears throat> that's about all there is to it. I can't show you anything else. Um, good luck.